So my sound, my sound is a little low, but yeah, okay. So Pastor Shiva gave me the thumbs up now. So uh, just bear with me because we had a beautiful, we had a, I can't use enough English words. So last weekend we had a youth camp here in Canada. And the move of the Holy Spirit was profound. I don't have enough words to say how it was because in English you can't fully describe it, but it was profound. It was phenomenal. Um, and today, like when I came in for the Zoom meeting, I just got my confirmations for what I had to share because uh, sister said, yes, there are a lot of, there's, there could be lack in our life. And in in the Lord's dictionary, there is nothing, there's nothing called lack. And if there is lack, today we are here. Today, the Lord ha has used me, has called me to, you know, deliver something hot from the oven. I love that word, hot from the oven from the Lord, because this is something. And um, before I speak, let me just, first of all, thank the Holy Spirit. Let me thank the Holy Spirit, because he's a person. He, like, you know, many of the times we think the Holy Spirit is just part of God or it's a power, or it's an energy force which comes over us. Um, you know, uh, we'll start speaking in tongues or we'll fall down. There is miracles. Yes, there is. All these are manifestations of the power, the result of the power. But the Holy Spirit is a person just like you and me, but he is the spirit of God. So he's holy. He is a perfect counselor. Just now, Pastor Shiva prayed, perfect counselor, perfect comforter. He knows our situation and he knows what each of us, like I can see 18 people on the screen, including me and Pastor Shiva. Even me, what I need at this moment, he knows. Even what Pastor Shiva know, needs, he knows. Even all the remaining 16 participants, the Holy Spirit knows how to talk. So even if I am giving out a small 20 minute session, the Lord will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will convict you in this. And you can take, please come with a super supermarket approach. Okay. There'll be some things maybe, maybe you don't like, maybe you don't like my t-shirt, maybe you don't like my face, maybe you don't like the way I speak. Let's let's leave the delivery boy. Let's leave. I know many of you order vegetables and spices. Um, and when it comes home, you don't look who's the delivery boy, right? You just take the vegetables in, what is it, uh, Uber cart? I don't remember what is that in India now. Yeah, so uh, you just take the vegetables and the spices and you go forward and make your biryani and your fried rice, but you don't bother about the delivery boy, right? Somebody comes in the scooter, just delivers it and go. So today, I am the delivery boy, the delivery lady, woman, who's come to deliver the word of God and what the Lord, the Holy Spirit wants each of us to know. So please don't mind me or my background or what my sound is, the way I talk, that doesn't matter. What matters is the living waters. Today, again, Pastor Shiva confirmed that the living waters is here. So I thank the Holy Spirit for giving me this opportunity for using me. Uh, I know who really I was before I'm in Christ. And so when the Lord is moving in me, the Lord is teaching me, pruning me, molding me, I am so grateful for the Lord for having used me here because I am not a perfect speaker or I'm not a theologian or, you know, a big public speaker. It's just the grace of God, just the grace of the Holy Spirit. And then I want to thank Pastor Shiva <clears throat> and I want to thank Wings of Glory and Pastor Joel for making this possible because there's a lot of mysteries in the Bible, but unless somebody mentors it to us, somebody gives us a good fellowship, somebody uh, rises up to the call of the Lord and obeys the call of the Lord to have these kind of fellowship meetings, these kind of Zoom meetings, the church that moves forward, we won't be mentored. So it's the call of obedience which Pastor Joel has taken and Pastor Sheba and all the women who work behind this Zoom meeting. I know Sister Lavina and everybody else, the Aston pastor's wife, the Aston pastor, uh, the elders of the church who has decided. So I thank the Lord and I thank them personally for obeying to the Lord. Today evening, Pastor Shiva can do a lot of other good things. She can make biryani, chicken curry and everything. But instead of that, she's sitting here to host. The, the interpreter sitting here to host. So I thank them for their sacrifice. I thank them for their obedience to the Lord for doing this so that I and you can be pruned and molded. So before I start getting into the topic, I want to bless each of you today. First, because I was asking the Lord, Lord, what, are the, what do your daughters need? I want to bless you with Psalms 42. Let's go to Psalms 42. I will read that out. And when I read it out, please don't mind my voice. Please take it from the Lord for you today. 
<clears throat> one verse one. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you, O God. I'm reading Amplified Version. Pants means, not the pants that our husbands wear. Pants means longingly. I long for you, for you, O God. My soul, verse two. My life, my inner self, thirst you, God, for the living God. When will I see the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. Let me go to five, verse five. Why are you in despair, O oh my soul? And why have you become restless and disturbed within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him. For I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Amen. I'm going to give one second. I'm going to ask Pastor Sheba to read this aloud, this verse. And when she's reading it, I want each of you, you don't have to unmute. Please read this in your room right now. If you don't have a Bible in your hand, just listen to Pastor Shiva as she repeats this verse because this is the blessing for today. Pastor Shiva, can you please read that verse out? Isaiah 4, uh, Psalms 42. Verse. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Thank you, Pastor Reba. Amen. Today, sisters, I want to remind you once again, this, this verse which the Lord is speaking, the word of God is alive. It's active. It's not something that we just read from a book. I've got so many Christian books here around my table. This is my table. If you see, I've got one book here. I've got one book here. I've got one book here. I love reading Christian books, Christian authors. But those books are written from human wisdom, like the Holy Spirit has inspired them to write. But the living word, the word of God, the scripture is not like that. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's written by people. Yes, it is printed and brought to you into your room and table, but it is living and active. Today, the Holy Spirit wants to ask you one question. Why are you restless? Why? And you need to ask your own soul this. Today, I've come here with this meeting. It's a 20 minute session. I've come with a lot of vegetables. Okay, I've not come as dessert. So may some, like I'm just saying it as an analogy, as an example. We mothers, we women, we wives, sisters, daughters, whoever you are here, grandmothers, whoever you are here. We're very good in making others, you know, eat vegetables. We know the uh, the health, nutrition, quality of everything. And when we give our food to husband or to our brother, mother, father, whoever it is, children, we keep saying this has this, this has that nutrition element, eat, 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 eat. And we give a wholesome food. Even in a biryani, we'll try to fit some. In a very tasty mutton, heavy biryani, we'll try to make some vegetables on the side so that the cholesterol will come down. All this. We're very smart in doing that, right? I've seen many women who do that. Or they'll make puree out of the pudina and the mint and everything so that, you know, I'm just trying to make this a little lively. It's not a topic, but still. So same way. Today I'm here not to give dessert, not to give oily greasy food i'm here to give a little vegetables and that's going to do good for you good for your inner soul even though it's not so nice to hear in the beginning right that's what we say to our children also vegetables are not so tasty but when you eat it you'll be strong so today i'm going to bless you with this verse you need to ask yourself the psalmist is asking yourself in this why are you restless why are you downcast, my soul? You need to ask. That's why I asked Pastor Shiva to read it out and for you guys to read it in your own. <laughs> why are you discount? Why are you restless? And what the psalmist says is hope in God and wait expectantly. There's some... If you please. If you it. Thank, you. Thank you. So hope in God. Can you hear me now? I hope my video will be good. Okay. So I'll sit very close so that you guys can hear. Okay. So today I want you to think and ask your own soul. Why are you so restless? Why are you downcast, my soul? And you need to tell your soul, your own soul you need to tell. You're very good in telling everybody else. I'm telling myself through the Zoom meeting right now. Hope in God. Wait expectantly, and I shall praise him 
for the strength of his presence. When we say that, and as ladies, I encourage you, talk to yourself. <laughs> we, uh, why I say this is because you need to talk to yourself. Sometimes in worship in church, when I'm worshiping in church service, I keep one hand on my own soul because I want my own soul to listen to it. Most of the time, there is this book of called Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. If you can read it, it's an asset book. It's an asset book. Why? Because your thoughts. Today, we're going to talk about how our thoughts are. In the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the scripture says, I'm just going to explain it and go quickly. The scripture says, the old has gone and the new has come. When anybody is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, verse 17. When anybody is in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. So what we expect is when somebody is in Christ, when somebody has taken Jesus Christ as their personal savior, or they've taken baptism, believers come to believers church, come to inner church, the person instantly becomes new. But unfortunately, sisters, that's not the case. We are still living in the flesh. We have the spirit that has changed. Our, holy, our spirit has become, has become tuned with the Holy Spirit. Okay, our spirit, only our spirit. But we have something called the soul and we have something called the flesh. So you're seeing me, flesh, okay? My nose, my eyes, all this is flesh. And I have an embodied flesh that's called the soul. You don't see my soul. I don't see your soul. But my soul is very powerful. It's got thoughts. It's got feelings. It's got emotions. And once my soul is activated, it can activate my flesh. I have got a lot of studies which I can show you. I do a lot of research where, uh, where the connection is between spirituality and psychology. So I do a lot of research on that. I follow a lot. I've done a, so I can show you a lot of studies, but I'm not going to bring that here because I want to focus on the word of God. And not because psychology studies are not powerful. If they have all submitted that, you know, scripture is bigger. I can show you a lot of studies where scripture has proven all these things. And psychology and medical science has proven all these things. So when your soul is downcast, when my soul is downcast, if I am downcast for one month, okay, you can see the difference in my skin. You will see the difference in my dark eyes, in my hair, in my strength, in my even in my immunity. So today the Lord is asking you, you sisters, why are you downcast and why are you behaving so restlessly in your soul? You can put a fake face outside, put makeup, go to the facial and be very bright outside. But in your soul, you're restless and you're downcast. And today the Holy Spirit urges you, what is going on inside? You need to talk to yourself. Why? Thoughts. The thoughts in your brain. Okay, so the brain. The brain is a organ of the body. And it's very funny. Like we think the brain always gives us negative thoughts. No, it doesn't work like that. So that's why I said I do a lot of research uh, on how neural pathways, it's called neural pathways. So the brain has sends neural messages. Okay, so if I want to move my fingers like this, my brain must tell my fingers to move. This is science. And this is why there's a neurophysician to help you. There's a neurosurgeon to help you if you have headaches or if you have neural pressure problems, okay? So your brain can send out neural signals. But who dictates your brain is your soul, okay? So if I'm going to be downcast this month, if I'm going to take up some problem of my life, and yes, there are problems. There are problems in my life. If there's anybody sitting here with an expectation that I have come with a magic wand telling you that Jesus told you all your problems are gone, I am sorry, I'm going to disappoint you today. Jesus never said that. In fact, he told you, he has promised before he left this world, in this world, you will have trouble. Any sister who's hearing me and sitting and thinking that, the, that God has disappointed you, that praying has disappointed you, praying and fasting has disappointed you, the word of God has disappointed you. I'm telling you, your interpretation of the, God, of the word of God has, has become a little different. It has gone side railed. Living a life of Christ, living a life of prayer and fasting and holiness does not confirm that you will get the biggest blessings of this world and that you will be uh, perfect. You will have a perfect uh, married life. You will have a perfect children. You will have perfect health. You will look beautiful. You will never die or blah, 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 blah. Those are wrong interpretations of the word of God. So why I'm coming back to this thought process, why I'm coming back to your emotions is your thought process can change everything. I can show you in scripture how that happened to so many heroes who should have been heroes of faith, but who went sidetracked, okay? 
So when you have a thought process and thought process comes from your own flesh, your own soul, it can be influenced by your circumstances. It can be influenced by today morning's uh, tired, today's mornings, when you got up what your husband told you. It can be influenced by news. It can be influenced by what you hear. It can be influenced by your children's taunting or it can be influenced by your children's upsetness. It can be influenced by a million things, by a zillion number of things, your thought. And when your thought process is influenced, because it does not have fences, it does not have walls. You people invest, we all Indians invest in our house. We invest in a wall outside. We spend a lot of money decorating it, painting it. But do we have walls for our thought process? No. Today, we're going to learn a little about that. How are we going to keep boundaries in our thoughts? Okay. Unfortunately, we are so funny and weird people. We keep a lot of big walls outside. We keep CCTV. We keep door locks. Excuse me, we keep big locks on our gates, but we don't keep locks over here. And this is what derails us. Oh, Rima sister, is that what you came to say today? Yes, I came to remind you, sisters, with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Today's topic, my topic was guard your heart. That was my actual topic. That's my topic, actually. I'll be writing an article based on my topic. It's guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23. I couldn't give this vegetable right early, right in the beginning. So that's why the Lord made me to go a little slow to bless you guys first and then bring the vegetable on. So the vegetable for today, the basic biggest vegetable, which is a little sour when you hear is guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23. This is not a responsibility of the Holy Spirit. This is your responsibility, unfortunately. You need to eat your own spiritual vegetables. You cannot depend on the dessert right now. The Holy Spirit has promised that in 2 Corinthians 5 17 which we read earlier when you are in Christ the old is gone and the new creation has come but we expect that the Lord has to do everything for us make us a good person make us a nice person make our husband good make that da, 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 da. but what the Lord is teaching you and me today is we need to guard our heart it is a responsibility you, you cook your vegetables and give it to your children and tell them they need to eat it you tell them they need to sleep. I've got a 10-year-old, 11-year-old. He, um, he, he had, I make him sleep at nine because I know he will not get up in the morning to go to school. So this is a responsibility you need to do yourself. You cannot blame the Holy Spirit for it. You cannot tell God to do it for you. The Lord is asking you to do it. And unless you guard your heart, we will get back to Psalms 42, 5. Why is my soul downcast? Every time your soul gets restless, anxious, worried, upset, it can be anything from starting that you didn't get the change back from your grocery vendor to you need to buy a house to bigger things that your children are rebuking you or they're fighting. It, it can be anything. Women are we're very good at worrying. Not we women, women who walk in the flesh, but women who walk in the spirit, we are good in conquering our worry. Let me change that. All women are not like the typical women that is always told by the world. If you know to guard your heart, and your heart doesn't mean this, of course, you need to guard your heart. You need to you do exercise and everything, eat healthy food. But your heart, the Lord is telling us about your embodied soul. You need to guard your heart. Why? If you don't guard your heart, your brain, your physical organ brain starts working in a different way. It. I can prove to you, I don't have time, but I can prove to you that your neural pathways will change. The minute you start coaching your brain, your mind to start thinking good, you, that's why uh, I'm sure Pastor Shiba, she always, that's something I like so much about her. She always keep, talks about, according to the word of God. You need to talk according to the word of God, even when you are tired, even when you're depressed, even when you're frustrated. I know it's hard. It's always easy to talk what you want, what you feel. Why you need to talk that is this goes into your ears and your brain starts taking that signal and your brain starts making neural pathways. This is proved by psychology. This is proved by medical science. So if you keep saying that you are healthy, even though you have periods pain, if you keep saying that you are, you will get children because the word says that you will be blessed and that you will be a fruitful wine in your home and still the doctor tells you infertility, the doctor tells you you have PCOD, the doctor tells you blah, blah, blah. Or somebody told you you're 40, you're an auntie, you're that, you're this. But in the word, it says those who stand by the waters, the, those who live on the living waters is a tree. Its leaf will keep bearing fruit. So even if your bills showed you that you are wrong and that you have no money and your future looks like a big question mark, the word, you need to 
bring that again into your brain because your brain works like a machine. It works like an organ. It starts making you become enthusiastic. I can prove in science. I'll prove it to you in science. Anybody, you want to have a one-to-one -one later with me, I can prove it to you in neural pathways. How the neural pathways will newly regenerate. If you live in a family where everything that you learned was to grumble, was to complain, your mom showed you that, your grandmother showed you that. They were believers. They were women of God, but they did that. They didn't do exercise. They kept on talking negative. They fought with their husband. You grew with that. Don't label that as yourself. I am like this. My mother was like this. My grandmother was like this. My church was like this. No, your brain can regenerate. This is what I want to tell you today. It can make new neural pathways. So till 40 years, you were a complaining dash, dash, dash. Today, you decide I am going to be a praising person in Psalms 42, 7. What it says, hope in God, wait expectantly. This waiting part is our problem because we put a calendar for God and say, I prayed six months. Where is my result? I prayed in 2022. Where is my result? I am 40 years old, 45 years old, 50 years, 20 years, whatever. Where is my marriage? I did blah, blah, blah. We put a calendar. What the Lord says in Psalms 42, 5 is 6 is wait expectantly. Waiting is hard. Waiting expectantly is a double, double, triple hard. We have something called double, double coffee. <laughs> I love having double, double coffee. Uh, it's like extra sugar and extra cream. So uh, so that's me. Okay. Yeah. And then I do exercise also. So very well. So let me not put that out there. Okay. So waiting expectantly is double, double, double hard. This is what the Lord wants us to do. But we are very good in saying, I prayed, I prayed, but God disappointed me. I prayed, this church disappoints me. I prayed, my husband disappoints me. Your responsibility is to guard your own heart, not to guard the church's heart, not to guard your husband's heart, not to guard your children's heart. Guard your own heart. Why? Why you need to guard your heart from your heart will start overflowing everything. Courage doesn't come in the absence of situations. I can sit here and lecture about so many things which I don't go through. It's very easy. But when I, I have to go through challenges, that's when you need to guard your heart. You need to always guard your heart, even if you're in a good situation or in a negative situation. If you're in a good situation, let that not go into your head. Let it not go into your head that my husband is good. My kids are good. Uh, they're all praying. I've got money. I'm going to church. I'm fasting. I'm praying. Let it not go into your head. Is that there's no use of taking that into pride. There's no use because there's only one firm foundation and there's only one living hope. Your husband is not your living hope. Your kids are not your living hope, unfortunately. <laughs> they're good, they're blessed. They're, let them be blessed, let them be blessed. Okay, I bless them, I bless your families. But your living hope is Jesus. So if you get it into your head when you're having good times that everything is good, oh wow, that's idol worship right there. So guard your heart. <clears throat> When you're going through a negative time, guard your heart. I have to stress this so much because I basically had to fight this battle. And I keep fighting this battle every day. I have to fight this battle because thoughts can come just like in a breeze. Right now, you could have just looked at my fingers. You could have looked at my t-shirt. You could have looked at the background. The background that I have right there, the fireplace, and say, oh, wow, she has a beautiful life. Said, this is how quick a thought can come into your heart. So you need to guard it because that thought is not aligned with God's word. If you look back into Genesis, if you look into the book of Genesis, everything is given in Genesis. Many people don't read Old Testament. Please read Old Testament. That's a copy of your New Testament living. You can learn a lot from these people who have made failures and try to make those failures not in your life with the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't depend on self-control, on a self-will. We depend on the grace and favor to get self-control. Fine. Now, if you look in Genesis, if you read Genesis, in that Eve had this issue, what many of us have, what even I struggle on, and the Lord teaches me every day. So I'm not perfect in this. So the Lord teaches me every single day, morning, afternoon, evening, he teaches me this. So in Genesis, if you see the conversation between the serpent and Eve, very funny, because if you read Genesis first, the Lord starts with, everybody thinks God is very strict. God is very difficult. So let me just go there. That's part of my speech today, my session today. So the Lord said to them, what God told him that you are free. You are free to eat. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go there because we know about the, uh, the serpent story and everything. But still, I'm just going to quickly go. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Okay, when you read Genesis chapter 1 in verse 16. Okay, the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may freely eat the fruit. This is the first sentence he said. But everybody focuses on, oh, don't eat that fruit. Don't eat that fruit. This is what God said. God is so harsh. God was. God gave us a lot of freedom. 
he gave he's a god of freedom but he also has boundaries he said you may freely eat okay we usually don't don't focus on that we always focus on the negative what he said after that he says only from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat otherwise on the day you eat from it you shall most certainly die this is the instruction but when eve talks to the serpent the serpent start starts asking a tricky question the serpent was is considered crafty by scripture of god so now what the serpent asks is um he goes like this can it really be that god has said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden what is the instruction you can eat freely from everything one don't eat and you will die but what is how is the serpent asking you he's asking something totally different can it really be that you shall not eat from any tree so how did the question go the question what was the instruction you can eat from freely from everything only one tree you should eat. what is the serpent asking can you eat freely like you know did god really say that you should not eat from any tree it became should not eat from any tree so how did he twist it his question itself comes to sting okay and and eve starts the conversation like how we do we have got these million zillion thoughts that come in our heart you're 55 years old you haven't bought a house who saying this the serpent he brings questions he brings thoughts the question and the thought is already distorted it's already sketchy you need to realize all your thoughts are not god's thoughts and all your thoughts you don't have to entertain these thoughts he starts with the stortiness he starts with the sketchiness he just changed you are free to eat from all the fruit this is all the trees this is what god said his question is did god say you shall not eat from the fruit how he just changed it the lord tells you today you are blessed you are chosen you are a new creation you are beautifully created you are wonderfully created you are blessed you are like the tree you will with you will never not with the your leaves will bear fruit it will always be green you will be the head you will not be the tail you will be uh, the you the spirit of excellence will rest upon you people will look to you you will not cry you will not, but what is his question to you this is the word of god you need to be feeling that with yourself you need to have your boundaries up your guard up your guard on your heart up but how does the serpent comes asking you oh you're 55 years old did you buy a house oh you're 55 years old your daughter is not married oh you're 40 years old your periods are not coming in maybe there's cancer coming along the way see the question is coming in a totally different way the thought is coming in a totally different way what you need to do at that time if we end up talking with eve entertaining that thought what did eve say she messed up the question even more serpent also comes with a lot of distortion in his thoughts in his talk and eve is answering to her him in a more dumb way you should read that later she tells him no blah 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 so nicely she says if and she says that if you touch it you will die when did god say if you touch it you will die so from one thing serpent brings another thing and eve ends it with another thing so she thought if you touch it you will die this is the problem with all of us we have the word of god the serpent brings something into our head into our thought process he doesn't come like a snake says your sisters right in front of us if he come if he came as a snake your husband would kill it off or you would call somebody to kill it off you're very smart in handling snakes but we are not smart in handling what's going inside here the snake is like in the it's in the spirit it's a spirit being it talks to you all the time when it talks to you you need to speak out the word of god this is what jesus did he said it is written it is written it is written because unless you quote scripture for your problems for your thought problems thought issues you will not win the conversation with satan if you say oh yeah i got prophecy that i am going to get married in 20 years or i got prophecy that i will have a beautiful married life you cannot stop your thoughts you need to take the word of god and hit it back and say it is written in the word of god that my children will not perish and that's it that's it it's not because last year one prophecy came and this year i lost my job that's not how it works that's not how it works you need to speak like jesus it is written why i'm so careful why i'm stressing this is we need to put up boundaries for our thought process we need to it's our responsibility we need to guard our hearts you want to know more about boundaries i'll just quickly finish we have only 5 minutes more what is boundaries what is boundaries is it is it a good idea to keep boundaries in life or is it a god's idea it is god's idea i can prove it to you in a lot of scriptures one simple thing i'll tell today when god created the world everybody knows we teach in sunday school the seven days first he did he created the fish then he created the uh, the animal then he, i'm not saying it in order sorry but you know you know the order right so god when he created water 
and he created land. He kept a place for the land and he kept a place for the water. Why? Why? Because God respects boundaries. God has everything in order. Today when Pastor Shiba prayed, also she prayed that. Everything God has in order. If you look at the parable, I can jump, I'll jump from here to another parable which Jesus has taught us, okay? Oh, okay, so God just kept land and water. So, okay, so fine. So why should I have boundaries in life? That's what you might think. That's just for nature. It's just beautiful creation, nature. If you look in the story, the parable about Jesus teaching about the Good Samaritan, we all know about the Good Samaritan story and we teach our children to share, telling about Good Samaritan. We tell about how we should be a good Christian, helping everybody, telling the story of Good Samaritan. If you read the good story of Good Samaritan, we're not going there right now, I'll tell it to you. Please read it later. In that parable, Jesus talks about this man, the Good Samaritan, who helped the person who was injured on the road. Pharisees were not ready to uh, do it. Many other people were not ready to do it. They were egoistic. They didn't want to help. This man goes out of the way. He does ministry work. And he uh, takes the stranger, goes to the hotel, admits him uh, into an inn, okay, a kind of a service inn, and he admits him. What he does after that, he's a businessman. He was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. A not so very spiritual person, so-called. Okay, This is how we think. Anyway, so he goes and he puts him in the inn and he says one thing. He gives his money in the hand of the innkeeper and says, take good care of this man and I will go and I will come back and I will settle the remaining with you. Okay, this, this sentence, most of us, we will miss it. This is healthy boundaries. When you try to step into somebody else's life and correct their life or serve their life, guard your heart along the way. Keep your boundaries. How boundaries are behave. Or how do boundaries work? We will learn in the next class. For that, I need a little more deeper class for that. It is based on, so I'll end this with four things that I need to tell today. How do boundaries work? Okay. One, you are responsible to. If you're writing down, you can write this down. You are responsible to. Okay. Second point, you are not responsible for. Third point, always ask. Fourth, detach from the outcome. As a mother, as a wife, as a personal person, as a person in ministry, as a daughter, as a sister, try using these four principles. I'll just wind it up with the example of Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. I don't want to use any other heroes. There's a lot of heroes in the, in the scripture who has done this, but I'll take the ultimate example, Jesus, one. You are responsible too, as a human being, living and walking in the Holy Spirit. We are responsible as a mother, sister, wife, friend, um, grandmother, granddaughter, whatever. You are responsible to other people's sufferings. You are responsible to be forgiving to other sins. You are responsible to be merciful. This is why Pastor Shiva has made this meeting, because she is responsible to her church. You are responsible for everything. Okay, to somebody else's pain. That's what the Samaritan person did. He became responsible for that person who was injured. Jesus came down from heaven to earth to die on the cross because he was responsible to our weaknesses. He took the responsibility on himself. That's how scripture says. He took the infirmities over himself and he died on the cross, right? Same way you and me, when we walk as a new creation in Christ, we are responsible. You're responsible to your son's headache. You are responsible to your son's homework. You are responsible to your husband's job, your husband's tension. You are responsible to the marriage tension that's in your house. You cannot say, I don't care. I'm not going to cook. I don't, uh, I'm blah, blah, blah. That's not the way we behave as people, women walking in the spirit. You are responsible too. But the next thing, you are not responsible for their sin. You are not responsible for their mistakes. You are not responsible if your husband sins, if your mother sins, if your son sins, if your daughter sins, you are not responsible for them. This is why the Lord gives us grace and freedom. Choose what we do in our life. Even though we are born again, even though we are blessed in the spirit. Right now, if I say a lie, I will not be, my throat will not be choked and I will not die right in front of you. Sodom and Gomorrah fire will not fall on me. Why? Because I've been given freedom of will. The Lord expects you to abide in his love. He is not responsible for my sin. It is my sin is my responsibility. That's why guarding your heart is your responsibility. When I reach the throne of judgment, my book will be open and the sins that I've done and the goodness that I've done for the Lord or win the Lord, whatever, it will be judged to me. 
that time the lord is not going to say oh reema you did zoom meeting that time i'm just going to let that lie go away i'm just going to let that you know that whatever jealousy you had go away no i'm going to be judged for that he is not responsible for my sin same way mothers sisters wives you are not responsible for the peace in your family you are not responsible for the finances in your family in a way that if it's going out of control you sit and weep 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 in depression no if your life was a marriage arranged marriage life you are not responsible for the entire course of it you cannot keep controlling your husband and controlling your children to make it look perfect in front of everybody you cannot control your body your body can go out of times you cannot control your tummy you cannot control your hips you can you stop taking control of these things and stop becoming restless in your mind but you are responsible too if there is a situation in your family you can sit and fast and pray but you cannot end up in depression that it's happening like this because you are not responsible the changes that your husband or your children or your mother in law or father in law has to take they have to take so what do you do when they don't take it this is where you fill your mind with words with the lord's truth and keep repeating it keep standing keep standing on god's promises and not sink down in depression because you are not responsible for it so because my husband is like this my children are going to be destroyed because my mother in law is like this my children are going to be destroyed no you are not responsible for them the lord is responsible for your children stop repeating stop believing this lie like eve if i touch the fruit i will die no you will not die that wasn't god's instruction learn to l- align yourself exactly with the word of god my children not start studying they will fall down i don't have any skills i'm not going to do ministry that's not the word of god the word of god says i'm like the tree my leaves will not wither in 60 years also my leaves will not wither i will be fruitful in every season baba even if i am a grandmother i will be fruitful at that time even if i'm sick with covid or if i'm sick in fever i'm admitted in the hospital i will be fruitful in the hospital the minute my brain comes back into consciousness i'll be talking to the nurse a word of encouragement that's called being fruitful so wherever i go i will be fruitful this is the word of god not what i see and what i think and you are not responsible for this world's issues you are not responsible you don't take all those issues on your head and start controlling your son and daughter and mother and father in law trying to bring them into spirituality and getting irritated over that they you cook food that's your responsibility you are responsible to their hunger to their hunger but if they don't eat you don't put that on your head and start you know nagging all around and becoming restless and irritated and then go to bed saying that nobody loves me i am the blah 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 i just be this prayerful person nobody everybody hates me that's where you cross boundaries you are not responsible to you're responsible for and this third thing the second okay and the second that's why the lord never went behind the responsible to i can show you the lord never went behind he freed people he healed people but he never went behind asking do you love me do you like me are you coming in my ministry are you going to be my disciple are you going to be my follower even today the lord doesn't chase us he doesn't control us he doesn't manipulate us he gives us the truth the responsibility is ours this is the way we need to live in life if we don't if we don't want to end up being a restless person the third thing ask always ask what jesus did every time he came to heal he would ask you know it's so dumb sometimes you see this blind beggar and he's standing in front of the blind beggar the blind beggar is like screaming out and he's asking what do you want me to do for you it's a very simple question we women think that the house has to run on our shoulders the ministry has to run on our shoulders everybody is on our shoulders we are not mrs holy spirit and we take things and we start advising we start putting in our head and getting stressed and tense and where are we having time to take care of ourselves where do we have time to be the vessel of god because we are so bothered about correcting and correcting everybody else did you ask if you if they need your help if if you said for a cover for a program in church you said that you will bring water or something whatever if pastor sheba tells you to bring chutney bring chutney or don't bring chutney don't try to be a people pleaser everywhere this is where we start pleasing people and not god did god ask you to do it did you ask god god should i be doing that did you ask those people should i be doing that you always ask what help you need from me before you go jump in and do help and when you do jump in and do help they don't want you they don't like you and then you come home tired and start grumbling and mumbling in that bedroom of yours in that bathroom of yours or maybe when you're washing the dishes why are you restless now why are you downcast now the next thing last thing always detach from the outcome this is what jesus did he would heal 
Even today, he's doing the same thing. He would heal, he would deliver, but he would never run behind people and say, are you going to follow me? Are you going to leave to, you know, the Pharisees and keep following me? Did you understand what I said? Am I convincible? I, I'm going to die on the cross. Are you going to come there and weep with me? He detached from the outcome. Today also, the truth is in your hands. The truth is being delivered to you right now. But God is not going to come behind you and say, are you still doing it? Are you still doing it? Are you still doing it? Are you still, please, 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 please do it. Please believe in me. He doesn't do that. He detaches from the outcome. But what are we doing? We give an advice to our spouse. We give an advice to our children and we're like, how come you don't live with me? You don't believe me. Oh. We get so emotional. We try to do it for a job. We try to do it for a ministry. I am so good at job and they laid me off. Of course, they will lay you off. Did you do, did you ask them what you, what you had to do? And did you always stay in your boundaries? Why are you so downcast? And we are so downcast inside. We are so restless inside. Where are we stewarding? Where are we stewarding like that man in the Good Samaritan? What did he do? So what did he do? He kept the person in the inn. He gave the money that he had. He's a businessman. He's got some business things to look in Jericho. He just can't be a full-time minister right now. He went back and did his stuff in Jericho and came back. You guys, some, sometimes ladies go for meetings and stuff. They just want to please Pastor Shiva. They just want to, you know, be a good person in church. And they come home and they fight. That doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So stewarding, having good boundaries, learn from Jesus what he did in this world. Even though he died for this world, he never, never stuck with the outcome. If he stuck with the outcome, we would all be ashes right now. Because he <laughs> died on the cross and still there's so many non-believers out there. We ourselves are going up and down, up and down, up and down. One day high up in the spirit, one day in the flesh. He's still ready to forgive. He's still ready to have grace and favor because he has detached himself from the outcome. When you want to do something good, when you want to pray for your family, when you want to love, detach from the outcome. Detach, detach, detach. That's when you can stop disappointments. That's when you can stop you. You can guard yourself from becoming hurt. People are going to hurt you. But you won't take it personally and you won't go down. And when you go, why your emotions, when you get entangled in emotions, you cannot operate in anointing. So that's why the enemy brings all this against us because he doesn't want us to operate in anointing. He just doesn't want even you to smile, forget the anointing and becoming an evangelist and minister and preacher and disciple. And everything. You just can't even smile. You praise the Lord on Sunday and the whole week you're like grumpy and sad inside. And you don't tell anybody. You don't tell anybody. You're very good at faking. I do this. So if this is convicting you, sisters, let's get back to Samson. Let me pray and close the session. So next class, we will be talking how to find out our own boundaries. Each person has their own boundaries and how the Lord has created us is how we can make our boundaries, understand what our boundaries are. That's what we'll do in next class. Okay, so let me pray. Father God, I just thank you for this beautiful time, O oh Lord. God, I hope I did justice to your word, O oh Lord Jesus. God, I don't want any of my flesh to come in between because it's not going to do good for me and it's not going to do good for anybody. It's just going to make me proud, O oh Lord. Lord, make me humble again. Wash me again with all that I spoke today again. Okay? Lord, because I need it more than anybody else. Father, I know how my boundaries, when it's not, when it's down, when my heart is not guarded, I can entertain all Satan's thoughts and I can end up being downcast, insecure. Lord Jesus, I need this the most. Wash me again with your blood, Lord. I pray for all these 18, 20 participants here, Father God. Lord, let the light, let the truth set them free, oh Father. They have a responsibility to guard their own heart. It's not their husband. It's not their children. It's not their job. It's not their in-laws who is actually destroying their life. Whatever troubles may come, oh Lord, God, you have said you have overcome it. You have overcome it. Have you overcome it today or in 2023? I do not know, Lord, when that overcoming is going to happen. I do not know when the deliverance is happening, oh Lord Jesus. Your word says it and that's period, that's final. You have overcome. And when we are in you, that situation, whatever that situation, however big it is, oh Lord Jesus, that is overcome in you. For we are more than overcomers. You die on the cross and we get the price, oh Lord. Whatever situation it is, sisters, right now, I want you to bring it to your mind. One situation that you're very struggling with, and I want you to rebuke and bind it in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to do it for you. You need to do it for yourself because the Lord, the living spirit is living inside you. Just repeat after me in your rooms, wherever you are. Father God, Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, above all names, wash me again one more time with your blood. Wash me with your living waters, the word of God. Mm -hmm. Father God, this situation, 
that is standing in front of me as a mountain, oh Lord. Today, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, in faith. I bind it. I bind the spirits working around it. And I tell it to go and throw itself in the ocean. What the scripture says, according to what the scripture says. Lord, I wait expectantly. In hope. I wait in hope. Expectantly. To see the goodness of the land in the land of the living. Lord Jesus, I hope expectantly to see my goodness coming, O oh Lord. I'm not going to put a calendar timeline to it. I will wait and hope expectantly, and I will guard my heart, Father God. Lord Jesus, I submit them into your hands once again, O oh Lord. Help them to carry this word today, O oh Lord, and bear fruit in their life. Let them be the vessel of honor. Let them be the vessel of God. Let them be the vessel, the light and the salt in their house. Let them learn to be steadfast, O oh Lord, whatever situation comes, O oh Lord Jesus, to keep their good boundaries, to guard their intentions and heart, O oh Lord Jesus, when they work for you in their house and not let the enemy steal their joy, O oh Father God, for the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Father God, I submit this session into your hands, the translation into your hands, O oh Lord, I submit the whole ministry, the church and all these women and, and their lives, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you for this opportunity. I really have to run. I'll send back an article 1793. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rima sister. Thank you so much. We bless Rima sister um, for um, coming and sharing the word. And uh, really, it was a blessing. I mean, the Lord confirmed this. Actually, for the past two days, um, we have been meditating upon the thoughts, thoughts as a man thinks in his heart. So is he and... Um, Thank you so much. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We speak abundance. We speak on the name of our man. Let the overflow happen. You know, for her family and everything. Um, just want, uh, got one thought when sister was sharing. You know, um, uh, if you all know that um, if a question paper, um, if a student gets a question paper, and if it is a board exam question paper, okay, just um, analyze it like this. If that questions are out of portion, you know, um, out of syllabus, automatically the board will give marks because it is not the child's fault for not knowing the questions because it is all out of syllabus, out of portion. You know, that is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Satan brought questions out of the syllabus out of the Bible, Eve should have just kept quiet. <laughs> she would have got 100 out of 100. But what she did was she tried to answer questions which was out of the syllabus. That's why her sister was saying, you know, sometimes we do that, which is not needed. We go and, uh, you know, poke our nose there. We take unwanted responsibilities, which is not ours. So, mm -hmm. Dr. really spoke very, very important, uh, which is very much needed where we have to shine, where we have to bloom, where we are supposed to uh, rise up and be blessed and where we have to, you know, speak, let's speak. And um, I believe the Lord has done a great job in all of you to this evening. So God bless you all. I just want to say the benediction and then I will hand it over to Sister Lavina. She's going to do the translation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you the peace that passes all human understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless all the sisters, especially the guest speaker. We'll be having a series in the coming uh, uh, you know, months. So every you know, fourth Tuesday, sister will be sharing. And um, God bless her. And I hope you all are blessed. I believe all of you are blessed. You can share your feedback. Um, in the group or personally, and I can share it to Sister Rima. So please go ahead and um, you can type in chat box or anything. God bless you all. Stay blessed. Over to Sister Lavina. Dear Namstotra, dear Ishwad, Buthavadanta, Wakilan, and Muskra Tankoti Dare, or Heli Dantella, Wakilana, Adiriti, they translate Madanta, Hade, Kupen Koti Dantana, Namtana, Ekadanana Santa Balashatin, the other really, though. 
ಅಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಬಲ್ಲೆ ಆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇಂದು ಸಂಜೆ ವೇಳೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಹೋರಾಟ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಲ್ಲಾಗುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಹೋರಾಟದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಸಹೋದರಿಯರು ಅತಿ ಉತ್ತಮವಾದಂತಹ ವಾಕ್ಯವನ್ನ ನಮ್ಮೊಂದಿಗೆ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾನು ಮೂರು ಹಂತವಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಲು ಬಯಸ್ತೇನೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಗ್ಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಮೂರು ಹಂತದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳಲು ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಂದು ಸಂಜೆ ನಮ್ಮೊಂದಿಗೆ ಅವರು ವಾಕ್ಯ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಳ್ಳಲು ಅತಿ ಸಂತೋಷ ಪಡಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾಕಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಮಾತನಾಡುವಂತಹ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಮಾತನ್ನ ಏನಾಯ್ತಂದ್ರೆ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಖಚಿತಗೊಳಿಸಿದಂತೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಶಿಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಅವ್ರು ಹಾಡಿದ ಹಾಡುವ ಹಾಡುಗಳ ಮೂಲಕ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಬಿಡ ಸಾರಿ ಆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮೂರು ಹಂತಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ದೇವರ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಖಚಿತವನ್ನ ಗೊಳಿಸಿದ್ರು ಹೇಗೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ಅವರ ತುಂಬಾ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರೇರೇಪಣೆಯಿಂದ ಕೂಡಿದವರಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಹಿಂದಿನ ದಿವಸದಂದು ಅವರ ಒಂದು ಮನೆ ಹತ್ರ ಬಂದು ಯೂತ್ ಸ್ಕೂಟ ನಡೆದಿತ್ತಂತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನ ಒಂದು ಅನುಭವವನ್ನ ಅವ್ರು ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮೂಲಕ ಅವ್ರ ಮುಂದೆ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಏನಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧನಾದ ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧನು ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನು ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಉಳ್ಳವನಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನು ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೊಡುವಂತವನಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಪ್ರತಿ ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆಗಾರನಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆತನು ನೋಡಲು ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಯಾದರು ಆತನು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಮಾಡುವಂತಹ ದೇವರಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆತನೊಂದಿಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಒಡನಾಟ ಇರುವುದು ಅತಿ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿರ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವರು ಪವಿತ್ರಾತ್ಮನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಇನ್ನು ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನ ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಅಹ್ ಕೊರತೆಗಳೇ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆದ್ರೆ ಅತಿ ಉತ್ತಮವಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಇದೆ ಹೊರತು ದೇವರ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಹಾಲೆಲ್ಲೂ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಉಂಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆದ್ರೆ ದೇವರ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ದೇವರಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಕೊರತೆ ಇಲ್ಲದಂತಹ ದೇವರನ್ನ ನಾವು ಆರಾಧನೆ ಮಾಡೋರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಆತನು ನಮಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ಮುಗಿಸಿದ್ದಾನೆ ನಮಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದಗಳನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆದ್ರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದಗಳ ಅರಿವಲ್ಲಿ ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಚಿಂತೆಗೆ ಒಳಗಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವ್ರು ನಮಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಕೀರ್ತನೆ ನಲ್ವತ್ತೆರಡು ಐದನೇ ವಚನ ಓದ್ತಾರೆ ಓಕೆ ಕೀರ್ತನೆ ನಲ್ವತ್ತೆರಡು ಐದನೇ ವಚನ ನಿಮ್ಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಓದ್ತೇನೆ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾಣವೇ ನೀನು ಏಕೆ ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದಿ ನನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೀನು ಯಾಕೆ ವ್ಯಾಕುಲ ಪಡುತ್ತಿ ದೇವರನ್ನು ನಿರೀಕ್ಷಿಸು ಏಕೆಂದರೆ ನಾನು ಆತನ ಸಹಾಯಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಆತನನ್ನು ಇನ್ನು ಕಂಡುಕೊಂಡುವೆನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೀರ್ತಿಗಾರನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾಣವೇ ನೀನು ಏಕೆ ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ದಿವಸದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನ ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಏನಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂತೆ ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂತ ಅದೇ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಹೇಳ್ತದೆ ನಾವು ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಯಾಕೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮವು ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ದೇವರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾಕೆ ನಾವು ನಿರೀಕ್ಷೆಯನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿಲ್ಲ ಈ ಒಂದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ವಿಷಯವನ್ನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಅವರು ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದ್ರು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರ ಇದ್ರ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಏನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮ ಕುಗ್ಗಿ ಹೋಗಿರೋದು ಯಾಕೆ ನಾವು ಯಾಕೆ ದೇವರಲ್ಲಿ ನಿರೀಕ್ಷೆ ಇಟ್ಟಿಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಮುಂದೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಜ್ಞಾನೋಕ್ತಿಗಳು ನಾಲ್ಕನೇ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ ಮೂರನೇ ವಚನ ಜ್ಞಾನೋಕ್ತಿ ನಾಲ್ಕನೇ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ ಮೂರನೇ ವಚನದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರೆಯಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿದೆ ನಿನ್ನ ಮನಸ್ಸನ್ನು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಂತ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಓದೋಣ ಯಾರಿಗಾದ್ರೂ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿದ್ರೆ ದಯಮಾಡಿ ಓದ್ರಿ ನಿನ್ನ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ಬಹು ಜಾಗೃತೆಯಿಂದ ಕಾಪಾಡಿಕೊ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಜೀವಧಾರೆಗಳು ಹರಿಯುತ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ಜ
ಕೈಗೂಡಿಸಿ ಮಾಡುತ್ತದೆ ಆ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ರೀಮ್ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳುವಂತ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ವಿಷಯವನ್ನ ವಾಕ್ಯಗಳ ಮೂಲಕ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ನ ಮೂಲಕ ಅವರು ಸಾಬೀತ್ ಮಾಡಲು ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಮೆದುಳಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತ ಒಂದೊಂದು ನರಗಳು ನಾವ್ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇವೆ ಮೆದುಳಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತದ್ದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನಾವು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತಹ ಕಾರ್ಯಗಳು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳುತ್ತೋ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೊದ್ಲು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅದನ್ನ ರಿಸೀವ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ನಾವ್ ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಕಾರಾತ್ಮಕವಾಗಿ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅಯ್ಯೋ ನಾವು ಕೆಲ್ಸಕ್ ಬರದವಳು ನನ್ನ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಉತ್ತಮವಾದ ಆಗ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಬದ್ಲೆ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗಳು ಹೀಗೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ನಾನ್ ಇಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೀನಿ ಅದ್ರ ಯಾರು ನನ್ನ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಗೋಳಾಡಿ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಮಾತನ್ನ ಆಡಕ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಮೇಲೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಒಂದೊಂದು ಮಾತುಗಳು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಕೇವಲ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡುವಂತಹ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಮಾತುಗಳು ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲವು ದಿವಸಗಳಾದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಹದ ಮೇಲೂ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಬೀಳುತ್ತದೆ ನಾವು ಚಿಂತೆಗೆ ಗೋಳಾಟಕ್ಕೆ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ಗೆ ಒಳಗಾದಾಗ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಮುಖದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತದೆ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ತಲೆ ಕೂದಲು ರೋಗದ ಮೂಲಕ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೋದು ನಮ್ಮ ಆರೋಗ್ಯವನ್ನ ಕಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದ್ರ ಮೂಲಕ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೋದು ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಕಾರ್ಯ ಮಾಡ್ತದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಜ್ಞಾನೋಕ್ತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬರೆಯಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ನಿನ್ನ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ಬಹು ಜಾಗೃತಿಯಿಂದ ನೀನು ಕಾಪಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ನಿನ್ ಆತ್ಮಹತ್ಯೆನು ತೊಂದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಿನ್ ಆತ್ಮರಕ್ಷಣೆ ಹೊಂದಾಯ್ತು ಅದು ಯೇಸು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನಲ್ಲಿ ಮುದ್ರೆ ಹೊಂದಾಯ್ತು ಆದ್ರೆ ಈ ಲೋಕದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ಓಟವನ್ನ ನೀನು ಓಡುವಾಗ ನಿನ್ನ ಓಟದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ನೀನು ಕಾಪಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುವುದು ಅತಿ ಅಗತ್ಯ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿವಸ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಾಪಂಚಿಕ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಂತೆ ನಾವಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಮಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಪಂಚದಲ್ಲಿ ಲೌಕಿಕವಾಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಿಗೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಲೌಕಿಕವಾಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರ್ದು ಏನ್ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಸಾರಿ ಅವ್ರ ಯೋಚನೆ ಅವ್ರ ಜೀವನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಚಿಂತೆಲೆ ಕಳೀತಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಆತ್ಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಳೆದಂತಹ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಈ ಸುಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನನ್ನ ಹೊಂದಂತಹ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಚಿಂತೆಯನ್ನ ಜಯಿಸುವಂತವರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲೂ ಎಷ್ಟ್ ಜನ ನೀವು ನಂಬ್ತೀರ ನೀವು ಚಿಂತೆಗಳನ್ನ ಜಯಿಸಿದಂತವರಾಗಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ಸ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೇನೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳುದು ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಲೌಕಿಕರಾದಂತಹ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಒಂದ್ ರೀತಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಯೂಶಲಿ ಲೋಕ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳುತ್ತಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರ್ಗ ಈ ಹೆಂಗಸ್ರಗ ಬರೀ ಚಿಂತೆ ಮಾಡೋದು ಒಂದೇ ಗೊತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಿಗೆ ಈ ಮಾತು ಅನ್ವಯಿಸೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾರು ಲೌಕಿಕವಾಗಿರ್ತಾರೋ ಅವ್ರ ಚಿಂತೆಗೊಳಗಾಗ್ತಾರೆ ಸಣ್ಣ ಸಣ್ಣ ವಿಷಯಗಳಿಗೆ ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ಆತಂಕ ಉಂಟಾಗ್ತದೆ ಭಯ ಉಂಟಾಗ್ತದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ದೇವರನ್ನ ಅರ್ಥಕೊಂಡಂತಹ ದೇವ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ದೇವ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಚಿಂತೆಗಳನ್ನ ಜಯಿಸುವಂತವರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಜಯವೀರರು ಅಂತ ಕರಿತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅವರು ಹೇಳುವ ವಾಕ್ಯಗಳ ಮೂಲಕ ನಾವು ಜಯವೀರರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ನಾವು ಜಯದ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನೇ ನಡೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕನ್ನೋದಾದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ನಾವ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಬಹು ಜಾಗೃತೆಯಿಂದ ನಾವು ಕಾಪಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳಬೇಕು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಲಿಯನ್ನ ಹಾಕಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರು ಉತ್ತಮವಾದಂತಹ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಯನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಏನಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಯೂಶಲಿ ನಾವು ನೋಡ್ತೇವೆ ಆ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯ ನಮ್ಮ ಆಲೋಚನೆಗಳಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ಒಂದು ಬೇಲಿನ ಹಾಕೋದು ಅದು ಉತ್ತಮವಾಗಿರ್ತದೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅನೇಕವಾದಂತಹ ಸೈತಾನನು ಮಾಡುವಂತಹ ಮಾತುಗಳಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಬಿದ್ದು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅವನ ಬಣ್ಣ ಬಣ್ಣದ ಮಾತುಗಳಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಬಿದ್ದು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತೇವೆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಅವ್ರು ಯಾರ್ದು ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಆದಾಮ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವಳಳ್ದು ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ದೇವ್ರ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅವಳಳಿಗೆ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗಿ ಆ ಸರ್ಪ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅವರು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಯನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಆ ಅವಳು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರ್ದು ಒಂದು ಬಲಹೀನತೆಯನ್ನ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ಚಿತ್ರಿಸಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಆ
ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನು ಬೇಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸೀಮಿತಗೊಳಿಸುವಂತದ್ದು ಇಷ್ಟೇನಿನ ಸೀಮೆ ನೀವೀಗ ಬೌಂಡ್ರೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡ್ತೀರಾ ಇಡೀ ದೇಶವನ್ನ ಭಾಗ ಮಾಡುವಂಥದ್ದು ಇದೇ ಸೀಮೆ ಇದನ್ನ ದಾಟಿ ಆ ಕಡೆ ಹೋಗಿದ್ರೆ ಪಾಕಿಸ್ತಾನ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಈ ಕಡೆ ನೀವು ದಾಟಿ ಬಂದ್ರಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅಮೆರಿಕ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಆ ಒಂದು ಏಜ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ರೀಸ್ ಕಳುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಬೌಂಡ್ರಿನ ಬೇಲಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರು ಕರಿಬಹುದು ಸೀಮೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರು ನೀವು ಕರಿಬಹುದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಹಾಕುವಂಥದ್ದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಅಗತ್ಯವಿದೆ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿವಸ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಗಳಿಗೆ ನಾವು ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಸುಂದರವಾದ ಮನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕಟ್ಟೆ ಅದ್ರ ಸುತ್ತಲೂ ಕಾಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಅನ್ನ ಹಾಕ್ತೇವೆ ಅದ್ರ ಸುತ್ತಲೂ ಕ್ಯಾಮ್ರಾಗಳನ್ನ ಹಾಕಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಎಷ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯನ್ನ ಭದ್ರಗೊಳಿಸಿ ಕಾಯ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇವೋ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯನ ಕಾಯ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಬಲಹೀನರಾಗ್ತೇವೆ ಹೇಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ಕಾಯ್ಕೊಳ್ಬಹುದು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯದಿಂದ ಹೊರತು ಇನ್ಯಾವುದ್ರಿಂದನೂ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಕಾಯ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯವೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನ ಕಾಯುವಂತಹ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮದಾಗಿದೆ ನಾವೇ ನಮಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಆ ಒಂದು ಬೇಲಿನ ಕಟ್ಟಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆದಿಕಾಂಡ ಒಂದೇ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯದಲ್ಲಿ ದೇವ್ರ ಏಳು ದಿವಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ತಂದೇ ಆದಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಸೀಮೆಯನ್ನ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಭೂಮಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ನೀರು ಇಷ್ಟು ಆಕಾಶ ಇಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳು ಇಷ್ಟು ಪಕ್ಷಿಗಳು ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ತಮ್ಮದೇ ಆದಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಬೌಂಡ್ರೀಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ದೇವರು ಹಾಕಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದು ಯಾವುದು ಅದನ್ನ ಮೀರಿ ಮಾಡದಂತೆ ದೇವರು ಕಾದಿದ್ದಾನ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ದೇವರು ನಮ್ಮಿಂದ ಬಯಸುವುದು ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತದಲ್ಲಿ ಬೇಲಿ ಹಾಕುವುದು ಅತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ನಾವು ಅನೇಕ ಬಾರಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಾವಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ನಡೆಯೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾವಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯಾವ ಕೆಲಸನೂ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೊಂದು ಸುಂದರವಾದಂತಹ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಯನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಅವರು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಸಮಾರಿಯನ ಕತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತು ಉಂಟಲ್ವಾ ಆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಸಮಾರಿಯನ್ನ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ತಾನೆ ನಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುವಾಗ ಒಬ್ಬ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಗಾಯಗೊಂಡಿರುವುದನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ತಾನೆ ಅವನ ಎತ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾನೆ ಅವನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿ ಒಂದು ವಾಸಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿಟ್ಟು ಅವನ ಗಾಯಗಳನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವನು ಬೇಕಾದಂತದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಉಪಚರಿಸಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಂತಹ ಕೆಲಸಗಾರನಿಗೆ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದುಡ್ಡನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ನಾನು ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲಿಗೂ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ನಾನು ಎರಸಲಿನಿಂದ ರೀಕೋ ಹೋಗೋದಿದೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಹೋಗಿ ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರ್ತಾನೆ ಈ ಹಣ ತಗೋ ನಾನು ಬರೋವರೆಗೂ ಈ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಗೆ ಬೇಕಾದದನ್ನ ನೀನು ಉಪಚಾರ ಮಾಡು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವನು ಹೋಗ್ತಾನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿ ಕಲಿಯುವಂತ ಸಂಗತಿ ಅನೇಕ ಬಾರಿ ಈ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಸಮಾರಿಯನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ಉದಾಹರಣೆಯನ್ನ ಕೊಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಓ ಕ್ರೈಸ್ತರಾದಂತಹ ನಾವು ಇದೇ ರೀತಿ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನ ನಡೆಸಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಸಹಾಯ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲರ ಕಷ್ಟಗಳನ್ನ ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಮರೆಯುವಂತ ಸಂಗತಿ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಅವನು ಸಮಾರಿಯದವನು ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಉಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಲ್ಲ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಬೇಕಾದದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಅವನು ಹೊರಡುತ್ತಾನೆ ಆ ಸ್ಥಳವನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋದ ಅವನು ಅವನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ನಾನು ಮತ್ತೆ ಬರ್ತೇನೆ ನೀನು ಅಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೂ ಅದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡ್ಕೋ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಾನೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಮಗೆ ಅಂತ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರುವಂತಹ ಸ್ಥಳಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಬೇಲಿಗಳನ್ನ ಹಾಕಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವುದು ಅತಿ ಅಗತ್ಯ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಅವರು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಈ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾದಂತಹ ಸ್ಥಾನಗಳನ್ನ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಬೇಲಿ ಹಾಕೋಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರರು ನಮಗೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಂಟು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮಕ್ಕೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಳ್ಳವರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕುಟುಂಬಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಳ್ಳವರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯವರಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಳ್ಳವರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸೊಸೈಟಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಳ್ಳವರಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಸಹ ಟೈಮ್ ಸರಿ ಊಟ ತಿಂತಾರ ಅವ್ರು ಊಟ ಮಾಡಲ್ವಾ ಅಥವಾ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೇಲಿ ಏನ್ ಕೆಟ್ಟದಿದೆ ಒಳ್ಳೇದಾಗ್ತದೆ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ನಾವೇನಾಗಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮಕ್ಕೂ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರಿ
ಯಾರಿಗೂ ನಾನು ಹೇಳೋದು ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗ್ತಲ್ಲ ಇವ್ರು ಯಾರು ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಸೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಇವ್ರು ಯಾರಿಗೂ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತಿನ ಮೇಲೆ ಮರ್ಯಾದೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಗೋಳಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಕಣ್ಣೀರಿಡುತ್ತಾ ಚಿಂತೆ ಒಳಗಾಗಿ ಆತಂಕಕ್ಕೊಳಗಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಆರೋಗ್ಯವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಕೆಡಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಅಂತವರಣವನ್ನ ಕೂಡ ನಾವು ಕೆಡಿಸ್ ಕೆಡಿಸ್ತೇವೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಯಾವ ಕಾರ್ಯವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಲಿಲ್ಲ ಆತನು ಬಂದನು ಆತನ ಕರೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಆತನು ಗಮನವನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನೋಡಿದನು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಉಂಟು ಅದ್ರ ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರರಲ್ಲ ಯಾರದ್ದು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರರಲ್ಲ ಇತರರು ಮಾಡುವಂತದ್ದು ಸ್ವಂತ ಗಂಡನಿರ್ಬೋದು ಮಕ್ಕಳಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅವ್ರು ಮಾಡುವ ಪಾಪಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ದೇವ್ರ ನಮ್ನ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಕೇಳೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನಿನ್ ಗಂಡ ಪಾಪ ಮಾಡೋದ್ನಲ್ಲ ನೀನ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಕೆಲಸ ಏನಿತ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಹೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ನಮ್ಮ ಕೆಲಸ ಇತ್ತು ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆ ಮಾಡುವಂಥದ್ದು ನಾವು ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಉತ್ತಮವಾದ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ನೀವು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಊಟವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಡಿಗೆನ ಮಾಡಿ ನಿಮ್ ಮಕ್ಳಿಗೆ ತಿನ್ನಿ ಅಂತ ಕೊಡ್ಬಹುದು ಆದ್ರೆ ಮುಂದಿನ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟಿರೋದು ನಿಮ್ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಅವ್ರು ತಿನ್ಬೇಕು ಅದನ್ನ ಅವ್ರು ಅದನ್ನ ಸೇವಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ದೇಹಕ್ಕೆ ಬಲ ಆತ್ಮಕ್ಕೆ ಬಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಅವ್ರು ತಿನ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಅವ್ರು ಸೇವಿ ಸೇವಿಸ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದವಾಗಿರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ನೀವು ನೀವು ಮಾಡಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಏನು ಅಂತಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ಆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಉತ್ತಮವಾದ ಉದಾಹರಣೆನ ಅವ್ರು ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ ಒಬ್ಬ ಕುರುಡನ್ನ ನಾನು ನೋಡಿ ಕುಂಟನಾಯನ ನೋಡಿ ನೀನ್ ಏನ್ ಬಯಸ್ತೀಯ ನಿನ್ಗೆ ಏನ್ ಬೇಕು ನನ್ನಿಂದ ಅಂತ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿವಸ ನಾವ್ ಏನ್ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರ್ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವಿಲ್ದನೆ ನಮ್ ಮನೆ ನಮ್ ಕೆಲ್ಸ ಯಾವ ಸ್ಥಳನು ನಡೆಯೋದಕ್ ಸಾಧ್ಯನೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರು ಕೇಳೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮುಂಚಿತವಾಗ್ಲೇ ನಾನು ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ನಾನೇ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ನಾನೇ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಮುಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ನಾನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ನಡೆಯೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಆದ್ರೆ ಯಶು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೋಡ್ರಿ ಆತನು ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರನ್ನ ಕೇಳಿದನು ಇಂದು ನಿಮ್ ಅಗತ್ಯ ಎಷ್ಟಿದೆಯೋ ನಿಮ್ ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡುದು ಅತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಬೇಡ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ನಾನು ಇಷ್ಟು ಮಾಡದ್ನೆ ಇವ್ರು ಯಾರು ನನ್ನ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ನಾನು ಆಫೀಸ್ ಹೋದೆ ನಾನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ವರ್ಕ್ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ರಜದಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇವ್ರು ಯಾರು ನನಗೆ ಪ್ರಮೋಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ನನ್ನ ಹೊಗಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಉತ್ತಮ ಸ್ಥಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ದುಃಖ ಪಡೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಅಗತ್ಯವಿದೆಯೋ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕೇಳಿ ಮಾಡುವುದು ಉತ್ತಮ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದು ಯೇಸು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತಂದೆ ಮುಂದೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲದ್ರಿಂದನು ಎಷ್ಟು ಅಗತ್ಯವಿದೆಯೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ಹಿಡ್ದಿಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅಗತ್ಯವಿಲ್ಲದನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಅದರಿಂದ ದೂರ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹತ್ರ ಅನೇಕ ಜನರು ಬಂದ್ರು ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಗೊಳಿಸಿದ್ರು ಅವ್ರ ಸಮಯಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾದಂತ ಊಟವನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕೇಳಿಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಏ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಊಟ ಇದು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗ್ ಅನ್ಸ್ತಾ ಊಟ ನನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ ಪ್ರಸಂಗ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಆ ನನ್ ಹಿಂದೆ ಬರ್ತೀರಾ ನೀವು ನನ್ ಜೊತೆಗೇನೆ ಇರ್ತೀರಾ ನೀವು ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಕೇಳಿದೆ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿವಸ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಾದಂತಹ ನಾವು ಅನೇಕ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿದ್ದೋಗ್ತಿವಿ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಜನರನ್ನ ಮೆಚ್ಚಿಸುವಂತಹ ಊಟ ನಮ್ಮ ಓಟವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಹಿಂತೆಗೆ ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಅಥವಾ ಈಗಿನ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಓಟವನ್ನ ನಾವು ನೋಡೋದಾದ್ರೆ ಜನರನ್ನ ಮೆಚ್ಚಿಸುವುದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಮ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮಿಕ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಮಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಊಟದ ಆ ಗಮ್ನನೇ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಜನ ಏನ್ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೋ ಇವತ್ತು ಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾದಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು
ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ನಕಾರಾತ್ಮಕವಾಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗಳು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಕೆಟ್ಟ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗಳು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಏನ್ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಲೋಕ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏ ನಕಾರಾತ್ಮಕವಾಗಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿದ್ಯಾ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಎಷ್ಟೇ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಅದ್ಭುತ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಗಳು ಬರ್ದಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲಾದ್ರು ಮನುಷ್ಯನಿಂದ ಬರೆಯಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿದ್ದು ಆದ್ರೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಜೀವವುಳ್ಳ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಇದನ್ನ ಬರ್ದವ್ರು ಯಾರು ಇದನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟವ್ರು ಯಾರು ಯೇಸು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನು ಇದು ಜೀವವುಳ್ಳ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಜೀವದ ಬುಗ್ಗೆ ಆಗಿರೋ ಕಾರಣ ಇದನ್ನ ನೀವು ಓದೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಇದನ್ನ ನೀವು ಮಾತನಾಡುವುದರಿಂದ ನಿಮಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಕಷ್ಟದ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿಗಳು ಬದಲಾಗಿ ಹೋಗುತ್ತದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಓ ನನ್ನ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಳ್ಳೇದಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಳ್ಳೇದಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸಾಲದು ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತದ ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ನಾವು ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇವೋ ಅವಾಗ ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತವು ಬದಲಾಗ್ತದೆ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲೂಯ್ಯ ನಾನು ನಂಬ್ತೇನೆ ಈ ವಾಕ್ಯಗಳು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತವನ್ನ ಬದಲಾಗಿದೆ ಬದಲಾಯಿಸಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಇದರಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಉತ್ತೇಜನ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಆಗಿ ನೀವು ಶಿವ ಶಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಗೆ ಹೇಗೆ ರೀಮ ಶಿಸ್ಟ್ರ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತಹ ವಾಕ್ಯ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಉತ್ಸಾಹ ಕೊಡ್ತು ಅಂತ ನೀವು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅವರು ಅವ್ರ ಕೆನಡದ ಇರುವಂತಹ ರೀಮ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಗೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡೋರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಈ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಸಂಗತಿಗಳು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅನೇಕ ಸಂಗತಿಗಳು ನಾವು ಓದೋದ್ರ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸು ವ್ಯತ್ಯಗೊಂಡಿದೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಕಣ್ಣೀರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಲಾಟದಲ್ಲಿ ದುಃಖದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅದರಿಂದ ನೀವು ಹೊರಗೆ ಬರ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯವೆಂಬ ಕಡೆದವನ್ನು ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಅದರಿಂದ ನೀವು ಹೊರಗೆ ಬರ್ತೀರಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಬೇಕಾದಂತಹ ಎಲ್ಲೆಯನ್ನ ಸೀಮಿತವನ್ನ ನೀವೇ ಹಾಕಿಕೊಂಡು ನೀವು ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಡುವಾಗ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸನ್ನ ಕಾಯುವಾಗ ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯದಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತಗಳು ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗ್ಲಿನೂ ಬದಲಾಗ್ತದೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿಡುಗಡೆ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನೆನಪಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಏನು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವಿತಕ್ಕೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿಗಾಗಿದ್ದರೆ ಹೊರತು ಬೇರೆಯವರು ಮಾಡುವ ಪಾಪಗಳಿಗೆ ನೀವು ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರರಲ್ಲ ನಿಮಗೆ ಏನು ಹೇಳಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿದ್ಯೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಕರೆಯಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಂತ ಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಮಾಡುವುದು ಉತ್ತಮ ಮಾಡುವುದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಕೇಳುವುದು ಉತ್ತಮ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಗಿ ಜನರನ್ನ ಮೆಚ್ಚಿಸುವಂತ ಓಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಡಿ ನೀವು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಮುಗಿದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಬಿಟ್ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದಿನ ಓಟವನ್ನ ಯಶು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ರಿ ಆತನೇ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅತಿ ಪಶ್ಚಿತ ದೇವರು ಆತನೇ ಮಿಗಿಲಾದಂತಹ ದೇವರು ಆತನೇ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಿರೀಕ್ಷೆ ಹೋದ ದೇವರಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆತನನ್ನ ನೋಡಿ ಓಡುವಂತಹ ಓಟದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಸೋಲಿಲ್ಲ ಕಣ್ಣೀರಿಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ದುಡ್ಡಿನ ಸಂಗತಿ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಯಶು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನನ್ನ ಬದಿಗಿಟ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಸೇವೆನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಯಶು ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತನನ್ನ ಬದಿಗಿಟ್ಟು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಕಾರ್ಯವನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೇನೆ ಸೇವೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸಂತೋಷವನ್ನು ಪಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಥವಾ ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಸಂತೋಷವಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಯೇಸು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಂದಿನ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಓಟವನ್ನ ಆತನ್ ಗುಪ್ಸ್ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಆತನನ್ನೇ ಮುಂದೆ ನೋಡುತ್ತಾ ಓಡುವುದಾದ್ರೆ ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕೀರ್ತನೆ ನಲ್ವತ್ತೆರಡು ಐದರಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಿದಂತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸು ವ್ಯತ್ಯಗೊಂಡಿರುವುದು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮನಸ್ಸು ದುಃಖದಲ್ಲಿ ಗೋಳಾಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಬಿಡುಗಡೆ ಹೊಂದಿಕೊಳ್ಳಲು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಜಾಯವನ್ನು ಕೊಡಲಿದೆ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಸ್ತನ ಅಂತ ನಂಬ್ತೇವೆ ಇನ್ನೇನಾದ್ರೂ ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ರೆ ದಯಮಾಡಿ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ್ಲೇ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ದಯಮಾಡಿ ನೀವು ನನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಬೇಡ್ರಿ ನಾನ್ ಹಾಕೊಂಡಿರೋ ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಎಂತದ್ದು ನಾನ್ ಸ್ವರ ಹೇಗಿದೆ ನಾನ್ ನೋಡಕ್ ಹೇಗಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತೆಲ್ಲ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಅದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಕ್ ಹೋಗಿಲ್ಲ ಸಮಯ ಸೀಮಿತ ಅಂತ ಇಷ್ಟ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಕ್ ಇಷ್ಟಪಟ್ಟರು ಅದ್ರ ಮೂಲಕ ಮೂಲಕ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ